Good morning, everyone. This is David Hoffman from David's Been Here, coming at you from beautiful, sunny Georgetown, Guyana. Today, I am so excited because I'm finally going to Kaichur Falls. Yes, this is the world's largest single drop waterfall in terms of water volume, four and a half times the height of Niagara Falls. We are excited. We can't wait to hit up Kaichur Falls, the world's number one waterfall in the world by volume. As David said, let's go. Let's go. And this is Roraima Airways. So we're going to get in a small plane now. I think it fits one of the 10 people. Let's go. Hey guys, rock and roll. Um, I was going to have an 8 foot departure. Yeah. 8 15. Yeah. 8 15. Alright. Um, okay, can I please get your guys' weights real quick? Um, and then I can check yeah, yeah. No. sure. So they have to weigh us, obviously, because we're on a small plane. And it's only like a, an hour, hour 15 flight, right? Alright, let's see. Sure. What do I weigh? Let's see if I've lost weight. Okay, how much have I gained in Guyana? Alright. 81 kilos. 81 kilos? Yeah. I'm literally up 6 kilos. Maybe it's the battery pack. <laughs> Alright. Well, let's go, let's go. Good morning, guys. Hey, I see you all over the place. On this one. How you doing, my friend? Are you good? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Awesome, I'm good. awesome. Thank you. Hey guys, how you doing? Morning, Hi, morning. Good morning. How's everything? Oh look, this is what we're doing guys. Kaiser Falls. So this is where we are right now. This is where we're going. So you got the Brazilian border, Venezuela, over here Suriname, and that's it, Guyana. I didn't have breakfast this morning guys, so I brought us a snack. So what do we have there? So we got some coconut biscuits. Um, during your stay here, you've probably been having a lot of coconut and cassava, mm -hmm. right? Of course. <laughs> So this is pretty much like a flat biscuit and you can dunk it in coffee or tea or Milo or whatever it is. So let's try it. Let's go. Ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm. Very tough. But a lot of flavor. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really nice coconutty flavor and something else like a little spice comes through, right? Mm -hmm. Nutmeg, cinnamon. It's almost like a, a hard coconut biscuit. I think it's perfect if you dunk it in chai. Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm. Or some of that um, lemongrass tea. Oh, yeah. That'd, That'd be great. Be perfect. You know, it's perfect for the morning, right? Yeah, for mm. sure. Love it. Oh, I'm out of coconut in here. Incredible. <laughs> You can get this street at the Guyana shop in Robin Albert Street right here in Guyana. And you have other stuff, right? Oh yeah, we got a bunch of other stuff. We got plantain chips, ripe plantain, regular plantain. We've got boil, uh, we've got fried chana. We've got some sweet stuff, milk fudge. We've got another one, nothing. So Stacy, there's not that much food there, right? Like no food at the falls it's because it's so isolated. Yeah, so pristine, so isolated. So definitely we just grab some snacks to take with us. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Yeah, I love it. Chris, it's very nice. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Hey, Jerry, how are you doing? Hey, hey David. Jerry. David, David nice pleasure. David. Nice to meet you. Captain awesome. Jerry Gabay Jr. Uh, I'm Lisa. Well, oh, from DPA. Oh, hi. Yeah. Hey, how are you doing? Hey. So, first time flying in one of these planes? Uh, no. No? I've been in these. I, I did it in, uh, in Suriname. I've done it in Panama, too. Oh, okay. Small, yeah. small planes, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, once uh, Stacey's a veteran, and, and obviously... <laughs> okay, okay, awesome. Yeah. They're good. They're good to go. Let me ask you, Jerry, what type of plane is this? So this is a Britain Norman Trilander. These are one of those jungle planes that are designed to get into those short jungle runways. It's made in England. Uh, in this aircraft, we can carry up to 16 people, actually. So we take about 16 people in and out of 2,000 foot, you know, dirt, sand runways and stuff. Really, really cool stuff. Amazing. And right here we have the cockpit. Yeah. Just can't touch anything. <laughs> Wow, look at this plane. Incredible. Yeah, so what It's happens, tight, huh? It's tight. It's pretty tight, yeah. But basically all the seats can come out and you can do different configurations. You know, as I said, we do medevac flights where we go into the middle of the night, you know, pregnant ladies, snake bite victims, that kind of thing. Oh, so wow. it's a really, really fun aircraft. Um, and if you get really creative, you can actually do paratrooping out of this thing and throw people out the back. Really? Whoa. Oh, yeah. What? <laughs> Intense, man. And right here we have our plane, this small yellow plane. Jerry, I love the plane, man. Yeah, it's cool, right? Amazing, amazing. 
So yes. how many people sit in that one? So this one is eight people, right? Okay. And actually this one gets into about a thousand foot runways. So, um, you know, we go into all those little cracks in the jungle. It's an amazing experience. So. Incredible. Jerry, what type of a helicopter is this? So this is an F-76. Yeah, Sikorsky 76. Um, it's one of the top of the line helicopters. And it's right now it's using the oil and gas industry here in Guyana. Look at this guy's monster helicopter. It's giant, huh? Look at this cockpit. How nice that is. <laughs> Oh wow, they got all the glass, huh? Yes. I mean, they can see everything. I don't have vision here, <laughs> and they got vision there. <laughs> yeah, so you can see the difference between like our, our technology versus like this is state of the art, you know, 21st century technology. It's fantastic. Um, as you can see there, that's one of the aircraft coming back in. It's live tracking, second by second, that's where it is. It's amazing. So as that's dissipating, we're gonna see the Kytra weather get a little bit better for you. Wow, so they're just, monitoring every second huh yeah so we've been waiting for a little bit because of bad weather over there but now the clouds have cleared and we're ready to roll i'm excited you good good let's do this let's do this thank you so much hey always a appreciate it we'll see you when we get back cool thank you all right guys excited here we go getting on the plane this way right excuse me this way guys excuse me she has to go that way you and me this way Stop for the back. Oh, the two front seats are so we gotta wait. Okay. You, you can't go no, in. no, no, come, come. I go in? Oh, yeah. Wow. Tight spot. Amazing. Cockpit right there. All right, everybody ready? Yes. Yeah. Catch your falls. Here we go. Emergency exit are these red knobs on the door. There's one at the front, there's one at the back. It's a no smoking flat. I advise you guys to have on your seat belt. If you so choose, you can use it your must to prevent the noise from the engine. So sit, sit back and relax. Thank you. So Captain, I'm sorry, what was your name? Hi. Fidel Medford. Yeah. Fidel Medford, pleasure. Oh, my bad, I'm very sorry. I'm a co pilot to Stacy. Hello, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Probs. So you will not be able to. That was easy. Welcome to Kirchner, everyone. I fell asleep for like half the ride. Oh. Let's get out of this plane. Oh. Wow, I feel great. Getting here was pretty smooth. The flight only an hour, hour, 15 minutes. You know, we passed through a little bit of clouds, a little bit of rain, but then when you finally pull in, you can see the falls on the left, you can see the falls on the right. My side, unfortunately, there was a little bit of clouds, but it's okay. Then we landed on this strip, very small runway, very small. I think it took us like, once we hit the ground, it was like 10 seconds we stopped. And then we got off, and then we met with our guide, and then, as you can see right here, we have the center. So this is Kaichu National Park Center, and this is a national park again. National Park, Kaichu Falls. Super excited. Let's go inside. Let's get some water. Let's continue to the falls. So in the visitor center, they have a souvenir shop. They have water, they have some snacks, and they have bathrooms. I'm gonna buy some of the souvenirs later for my kids. And now we're going to the falls. So this is another way you can get here? Yeah, there's another way you can get there, uh, which is overland. We flew here today, but you can actually trek overland, but it takes about five days. But that one is totally worth it too, because you get to see the waterfall from the bottom. Our passengers, good morning. Good morning. Welcome good morning. to Kaichu National Park. The name is Simon. I'll be your tour guide for the period of time that you have here. One and a half on the ground. So um, here at Kaichu, we have a few rules. There are no ways disposed within the national park. Everything that we use during the tour is taken back to Georgetown for us. So we take back whatever we use right now to the building that we started and it is disposed of in Georgetown for us. The vantage point that we're heading to today, there are no safe barriers. The natural vegetation that you see around acts as the barriers. Let's be extremely careful when we get there. I see a few kids in between the, in the group. Parents are guiding please ensure to hold the child or the children's hand because there are no safe barriers and it can be very dangerous if you get too close to the edge. <laughs> Thank you. 
what's it called? Sun juice. Right? Um, how it works, it gives off a sweet fragrance that attracts them. The mosquitoes land or any other small flying insect land on the sun dew and it is trapped there. How it is trapped? It has a sticky substance on the surface that causes the insect to be trapped. So that's a carnivorous plant. That's amazing. Never seen it before. You put your finger Only here, right? Oh. And it obviously rained like two minutes ago because this is super wet. As you can see, there's a little bit of a fog right now. They said it's when it's like really, really bad, you can't even see the falls. So hopefully we'll be good. I think we'll be good. It's amazing. By this huge plant that you've seen behind me, but in front of you, they are called the giant tank bromeliads. They can grow at least 20 feet in height, right? They can hold at least a gallon to two water within them. And within these giant tank bromeliads, you can find the golden frog, which is one inch. Right? So when we get to the first vantage point, I check these bromelias. If the frogs are there, we have a chance to see them. The vantage point that we're heading to is called Boy Scouts View. Right? We had a 39 British guided Boy Scouts coming here for exploration purpose. They track of what they term the Oh My God Mountain. It's this mountain that we're on. It takes roughly like two to three hours to get down, but triple that, that hours to get up back because it's really a hike. So apart from how you guys flew in today, you can actually do a five day tour to get to Kaichiro, the last part to hike up the mountain, right? So you can keep that in mind if you want to do that. Let's be careful again as we get to the first vantage point, no safe barriers, it's wet and slippery as, as it is. We may not see the falls at the first viewing point, but we're going to keep getting closer. Let's go. Unfortunately, we can't see the falls from this viewpoint, but we can see the wow. golden frogs. We're going to get close to see the golden frog. Oh, it's over there, look. Just be careful. It's called the golden rocket frog. Look down here, the golden tiny small guy. Oh, they're right inside there. For the 223rd of March, 1937. So the Boy Scouts came here in the year 1932? 1932, 1937. That's three years after Kaichiro National Park was made a national park. And Kaichiro National Park became a national park in the year 1929, right? Yes, 1929, yes. That's the trek, the jungle. Jungle trek, guys. This is the Amazon, right? Definitely. Like. Because the rainforest. So. So I've been to the Amazon one time before. Wow. Super deep in Ecuador, actually. Yeah. A bee nest, we gotta be careful with this. A bee nest. <laughs> they come out. Temperature and everything just changes between here. Yeah, man, it just dropped like five degrees. Yes. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, out there, a little hot here in the jungle, in the rainforest. Wow, it's nice and cool. Hey, do you ever see any animals over here? I know you guys see that big uh, tarantula, right? The blue tarantula? Yeah, well, I've seen, um, I have seen the, a lot of foxes in the area. I've seen a lot of um, capybaras and agoutis. We have a lot of snakes, like one of the venomous ones we have here called the Labaria. And just there, we have a lot of species of different birds. We have like the macaws and the parrots, just to name a few. This plant is called a Melastoma TSEA, Melastoma for short. The indigenous people, mostly the Amerindians, they make use of the leaves for a toiletry, for use the toilet. It's very soft. Right, you can come and have a feel if you want to, and you can also agree if it can be used for that. <laughs> oh, wow, yeah. I mean, a little bit like sandpaper. A little bit sandpaper. <laughs> I don't know if I would use that, but some good jungle toilet paper, right? <laughs> what do you call them? Or this one more so, with the stripes on it. Look closely at it. It has a red flaming sword within it. We call it a flaming sword or a feather, some people want to call it. Right? It's called the tiger stripe bromeliad. There's another type of bromeliad you guys learned today. The first one you saw was a giant tank with a golden frog. This one is called the tiger stripe. They're more um, ahead with much, much red, uh, red feathery um, flaming sword in the middle. As we get closer to the falls, you're gonna see them. But these are called the giant tank, um, the tiger stripe bromeliad. Sorry. Tiger stripe bromeliad. Tiger stripe, yeah. Right, it's a, it's a family of the bamboo. Family of the bamboo, this one. So what's the name right. of it? This here is called the Mokro. The indigenous tribe, again, they make use of this to make small handcrafts, like small um, straw hats or baskets, like the ones that you have on there. You'd be surprised, they use this to make that. Mokro and other um, NTFPs, meaning non-timber forest products, like the Tibisiri and so on. They use that to make um, handcraft, but this is called Mokro. Be careful with your heads. Whoop, careful. Have you one walk on there. Yeah, right. So I never really introduced you. What's your name? Hi, I'm Lisa Rogers. I'm from GPA. So you're a photographer for the day, right? Yes, amazing, I'm a amazing. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. <laughs> and to be on this trip. <laughs> so we're gonna get the best images because she has the best camera. 
<laughs> what do you got? What do you got? Yeah. This is 1D. One 1D. One yes. Nice. It's amazing. As we're getting closer, you can hear the falls it's crashing. We are approaching our second vantage point, which is called Rainbow View. Whenever the sun is out, you see rainbows. There's something called refraction of light. So wherever there's light and there's water or whatever it is, you have um, rainbows forming. Nevertheless, even if you see no rainbow, it still remains rainbow view. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> this is the most incredible waterfall I've ever seen in my life. Four and a half times higher than Niagara Falls. The highest single drop waterfall in terms of water volume in the world. 741 feet high. Look at this beauty. Incredible. Those rocks are billions of years old. The Amazon rainforest and look at that. I am so happy to be here. This just made my trip. Number one experience was with the president, his excellency. Number two is right here. I'm just blown away. So we spent around 15 minutes here just getting photos right here at the rainbow viewpoint. It really looks like a rainbow right there, you can see. Don't get too close guys, remember, 10 feet. Don't get too close. A little scary, when you get too close, you can feel why I tell you to stay away because literally you can just drop. 740 feet down, 741, right? From here, probably a little higher. All right, let's go to the next viewpoint. Third one, third one's the charm, they said. The best one. Well, so we go down this trail? Uh -huh. Over here? Gotta be careful, huh? It's slippery. So this last viewpoint is right up close to the mouth of the waterfall, you know, right where it drops. They say it's incredible. My friend. So what's the name of this viewpoint? It's called Nature Valley View. Nature Valley view. view of the valley, and a closer view of the waterfalls. Woo! Look at this gorgeous waterfall. What a stunner. The sun has come out. You can see the colors. It's rainy season. It's flowing out like crazy. And remember, this is the farthest we go, right? We don't go any farther than here. Those other points, they're closed off. This is just, this made my trip right now. Guyana, Guyana, one Guyana. Amazing. Now we have about a 20 minute hike back up. A little steeper, so it's a little harder, of course. But it's gonna be good. We're gonna go up to the top. We're gonna go to the gift shop. They have some really cool stuff that they make out of sap. Some little animal figurines made out of sap. It's amazing. I'm pretty sure it's sap. I have to buy some of that stuff for my kids. We're gonna have some snacks. We also have the snacks with the try. Some yummy Guyanese snacks. Oh, I gotta be careful here. I can slip. The oxygen. It's amazing. Yeah, no, this is fresh water, huh? Fresh water, right here. Everything okay? Uh. Oh, so fresh. Oh, for sure. Yeah, legend has it. You drink this water, you come back. Oh, it's good. Really fresh. They just told me we have a mini shortcut to get back to the to the station. Oh, they said it's also a lodge, right? You could stay here overnight. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Out of breath. This way, this way, there's only one way. This is the shortcut. Yeah. As you can see, we're entering from the back side and we went from the other side all the way around, right? All right, now we're to the gift shop and let's see these little figurines. Here they are. Let's open this up. So how many animals we got? Got some snakes, turtles, manatees, leopards. Over here we have some sloth. No, no. So I'm taking for sure this guy and this guy. Well, this is um, made out of balado, which is bled from a tree. So they, you basically collect it and it hardens a bit. Well, it's like rubber, and then you form it into these different animals. So that's what it is. Okay. And the people who do it are called balado bleeders. And it's really an art form. And this is the place to buy it. This is the place where it comes from, right? So it's 1,500 each, right? Something like that? 1,500. 1,500, yeah. Right here we have the process. Find a tree, protect it, cut, climb, don't fall, roll in shade, fire and water, and countless hours and miles to get to us. So they have so many animals. There's 15 in total. I'm getting all of them for my daughter. So we got a snake, we have a yellow foot, we have a caiman. This is a macaw, what else we got? Armadillo, we have a manatee, we have a sea turtle. I don't know what sea turtle that is, maybe a leatherback? Who knows, right? Look at this. So this 15 is what I got, 15 in total. Stacy, 
Ant eater? Giant anteater, not anteater, giant. Giant. <laughs> yes, this is a uh, wild hog. This is a, a obviously porcupine, manatee, manatee arapaima, uh, red winged parrot, yellowfoot, yellowfoot, jaguar, sloth, ja um, yeah, sloth, tokotukan, black caiman, and not a manatee. Oh, another manatee, so I got two. Uh, My bad. Yeah, this is a. The green? Yeah, the green. The green sea turtle. And, and the, this is an armadillo. And then we got the snake. Yes, this is a giant anaconda. Is it a giant anaconda? Yeah. Oh, the Amazing. green. Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. Okay, I bought my kids every single one they had, 14 of them. And then I bought an extra six for friends. You know, I spent like about $100, $120, but I think it was definitely worth it. You're supporting the community. You have to do this when you come here. Do not come here and not buy one of these. Support the local community. This is what they live off of. This is what they make. Beautiful craft. Love it. Hi guys, we're just having like a quick snack break here and we're gonna be having some fried chana. This is basically like chickpea. It's the perfect Netflix and chill snack. Mm, try it. Let's try it. Crunchy, salty, delicious. Mm-hmm. Mm. mm. So very, very crunchy. We got two for the plane. Okay. We got this one, which is called nothing. Okay. And fudge. Milk fudge. You gotta try a piece of this. Oh, I'm trying this. Mmm. <laughs> oh, I think I'm out of chunk. Oh, it's delicious. Mmm, nice and dense. Definitely, I love this perfect snack. What is it? Milk fudge. So it's milk made fudge. like milk and a little bit of spices, sugar. Really delicious. My Get favorite. Finish. My favorite so far. Mm hmm. But a lot of sugar. So because we're the only people here, we have to run another plane. Let's go. I'll tell you. This is lunch. I'm happy. <laughs> My man, thank you. Thank you. All right. And I'm riding in the front cockpit. Let's get the view from the top one more time. So they give you a chance in the beginning to see on both sides and they give us one more chance now. Rock and roll? Yeah. All the way in, right? Yeah. Try to slide in here. Oh. Oh, it's hard. Seatbelt on. Let's go. And remember, go to the bathroom before you get on the flight. It's about an hour 15. Okay. What an experience, man. <laughs> Loved it. Thank you so much. Here we go, guys. Put these on.